Hello everybody, this is Mr. Matthews and this is a short Loom lecture on an idea called Providence and how it relates to Macbeth which you can slip in to your answer. It's not a huge amount to say about it but I'll go through what Providence means and show how it is linked to the play Macbeth. So basically if we start with the idea that Macbeth is very evil, he does these dreadful things, he kills the king, he kills Banquo, he, he has he has also the blood of Lady Macduff and his son on his hands and others as well. So you might think that evil is going to triumph, but in the end Macbeth is destroyed by Macduff, killed in combat, his head cut off, the end of the tyrant and young Malcolm who has a claim to the throne of Scotland he will be the next king so it's the idea that in the end despite all the horrors justice is restored and order is restored so it's this idea that God is in charge trust him so here's a definition of providence providence is the protective care of God or of nature as a spiritual power. God or nature as providing such care. Synonyms, foresight, forethought, prudence. You can also slip in another term, which is poetic justice, where the bad guys, they get their comeuppance and good people are in the end protected. So I'm gonna suggest, strangely enough, that even after all the horrors of Macbeth, there is a kind of happy-ish ending, which I'll explain a bit later on. Now, I think that Shakespeare, whatever his particular religious views, would have believed in the idea of providence, because it was a general idea in the Protestant England of his time, the time of Elizabeth I and then James I. Remember that Macbeth was written and performed in the Jacobean period, the reign of James I. But there was this idea that over, overall, Almighty God, who was seen as a Protestant, was in charge. So, for example, when the Spanish Armada sailed against England in 1588, it was said that the great storm which drove the Armada off course was sent by God and there are illustrations which say God blew and they were scattered so the idea was that the wind came directly from God okay so there's this idea that however much however much danger you're in however bad things seem in the end everything will be put right there is a cosmic order and at the heart of the cosmic order is God's sense of justice. Shakespeare would have, I think he would have accepted that. And it appears to be something that, that, that is in, that is contained within the play Macbeth. So James I and the divine right of kings, I mean, this is what James would have believed. Kings are messengers from God and must rule in accordance with him. By saying kings are God's messengers, the devil becomes my biggest enemy. Therefore the witches, who obviously appear in Macbeth, kings are higher and better than other men, must follow God's traditions, ideas, and not become wicked. So, when in 1605, the Catholic plotters, led by Catesby and, and most famously by Guy Fawkes, tried to blow up Parliament. Providence was at hand. It didn't happen. And in this picture, you can see the King's soldiers who have been alerted to the fact that Guy Fawkes is, is in the cellar of the House of Lords. And they've gone down into the cellar and they've arrested him. And of course, the terrible deed will not take place. The gunpowder will not be set off. King James and his family and his parliament will be safe. Now that is the idea of providence. So if you put that down in your notes. 
And that, of course, was the huge news story of the time. And that links in with what happens in terms of the murder of King Duncan. Right. Now in the play, Macbeth kind of uh, takes on the role of Guy Fawkes in being the villain. And he does actually kill King Duncan. And we've got some quotations here. Still it cried, sleep no more to all the house. Glams hath murdered sleep, and therefore called all such sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. So this is the idea that Macbeth has gone against the cosmic order. He has committed a terrible crime. He has murdered the king. He has murdered God's representative on earth. The cosmic order, the great chain of being, has been broken. And as a result, he will sleep no more. His punishment is that his conscience will tear him to bits. And that's an important point about Macbeth. Um, I said this in another lecture on the topic of Macbeth and ambition. That ambition, that the ambition of Macbeth and his murder of King Duncan does not bring him any happiness whatsoever. It brings him utter misery. And this, again, is an important idea. Because it's almost like saying that crime doesn't pay. We often use that um, phrase in life today. Um, he gets everything he wants. He gets the throne of Scotland. But it does not make him happy. Now this is an important point. And you can slip this in. Shakespeare already, long before he wrote Macbeth, had written a series of plays about English history in the Middle Ages, before the Tudors came, where there was a lot of infighting within England, what we call civil war, the Wars of the Roses. Now, Shakespeare had a theme which said that if you kill the legitimate king, However, however bad that king is, however poor that king is in terms of doing a job as a king, in terms of running the country, as it were, in terms of ruling over the country, however bad that king is, he has the authority of God with him. If you overthrow that king, if you murder that king, then you are going against the idea of God and God's cosmic justice. And also, I think there is this idea that kings have a responsibility to God. They are accountable to God. So if, if, if they behave in an atrocious way, they will be destroyed because that is what God wants. Again, Shakespeare, I'm not saying he was incredibly, incredibly religious or anything, but he would have been familiar with the Bible, which by that time was written in English. And there are stories in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, the Jewish part of the Bible, where if you go against God, you'll succeed for a while, but then you'll be found out and you'll be destroyed. There is a, there is a kind of moral order. Even a great king like, such as King David, he, he murdered somebody so that he could get hold of that person's wife. His name was Bathsheba. His name was Uriah the Hittite. And he had him murdered. And he thought he'd got away with it. But in the end, God realised and he was punished because he had, he had done this dreadful thing. So it's this idea that overall there is, there is a moral order. And evil will not succeed. Good in the end will triumph over evil, although evil will have, you know, will have a will have a kind of reign of terror for a while, but then will be brought 
to an end. It's also important when we actually look at Macbeth to see that Macbeth does actually have a conscience. And of course, when he sees the ghost of Banquo, that is his conscience in action. It's simply his own, um, his own imagination. Because if you notice in the play, nobody else can see Banquo. This is quite significant. It's not a ghost in the sense that, that in the sense that um, you know, everyone else would see it. He sees the ghost of Banquo because he has a bad conscience. And that shows that Macbeth himself realizes that he has committed a crime against the cosmic order, against the great chain of being. One of the worst things that happens, of course, is the murder of Lady Macduff and her son, which is a particularly violent and chilling episode in the play. And you might think, oh my God, that is pretty awful. This, this can't get, that can't get any worse. Well, yes, it's true. Evil will seem to triumph in the short run, but there is a comeback. And we can say that Macduff himself is the agent of providence. He is the vengeance of the Lord. He acts on behalf of God in destroying the tyrant uh, Macbeth and restoring the cosmic order. So there we are from the, from, from the film, from the Roman Polanski film. There is Macbeth with the sword run through him and there is Macduff as the agent of God. If I was to go back to that, that's the same kind of thing as King James's soldiers arresting Guy Fawkes. So they are the agents of God there. They're the agents of providence. God has ensured that the Protestant King James will not be killed by the Catholic plotters. And Shakespeare has Macduff as the same kind of thing. He is the agent of providence. In the end, good will triumph over evil. Evil, it seems, has its day, but good in the end will win out. And therefore, we can say that justice and order is restored and poetic justice that's another phrase you can use. You can use providence and poetic justice. So let's look at this. Poetic justice is portrayed in the death of Macbeth himself. He who would cause the death of so many to gain the throne loses his life because he has gained that throne. So can you see there that, that that, that phrase, those two, those two or, or three sentences basically um, sum up the point I want to make. And these are the lines, Act 5, Scene 8, lines 32 to 40. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with the rabble's curse, though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane and though opposed, being of no woman born, yet I will try the last. Before the body I throw my warlike shield, lay on Macduff, and damn be him that cries, hold enough. So he makes the final stand, but he will be destroyed. However much, however much bluster he shows, he will in the end be destroyed. And poetic justice and justice and order and providence, the rule of providence is restored. So there we are. So how could you use this in a, a question about Macbeth? Well, if they were to ask you about 
Macbeth and ambition, you could bring it in there. If they were to ask you about Macbeth and evil, you could bring it in there. Um, essentially, you could make the comparison, the context of the gunpowder plot and how King James himself would have recognized what happened at the end. So what happens at the end of the play when Macbeth gets his comeuppance, King James would have recognized that and related it to the fact that Guy Fawkes got his comeuppance in terms of the gunpowder plot. Okay, thank you very much for listening.